Hello from the Pacific Northwest. This is Kristen from kristenwombeck.com, and you're listening to Intentional Now Podcast. More people than ever are asking the questions, how do we find ourselves on the resurrected side of Jesus? In this show, I discuss what's really on the other side of the torn veil, ascending into heaven, and how does our sonship fix the heart of creation? If you're like me, Jesus has redefined what you used to say yes to. Join me and my guest in a workshop discussion that proclaims, we are not nailed to the cross or dead in the grave, but fully alive and resurrected in him. Let's do this. (laughs) Welcome to today's show. Hello. A very blustery day here in Oregon. It seems like, oh, just two weeks ago, my husband Don and I were sitting out in the the corner of our yard on an 80 degree day, and I was sitting in my favorite Papazon chair. And this week, oh my goodness, we have the first snowfall on the top of Mary's Peak here in the Pacific Coast Range. (laughs) It sure did change fast around here. So before I share with you today's takeaways, I want to share with our international family some of the context. I am recording this, obviously, in the United States, but we are tallying our votes just this next Tuesday. So the political atmosphere around here is mm, a little charge. I just wanted to kind of set that up for you today. I am going to to share a few things in that regard. So today's takeaways, soul ties, removing them, praying for others, and angelic intervention. Come up higher, a political prayer. And God, you know, he is into details. Okay, are you ready? I am so excited. I'm always excited. It just bubbles up and here we go. And I get to come and sit down and talk with friends, listen to Holy Spirit. And my goodness, it's such a good time. So you are very welcome. I'm glad you're here. Let's begin. So in the area of soul ties, you might be totally familiar with it in the area of inner healing and deliverance, but I just want to give a little bit of background if this is something new for you. So what are they? So well, soul ties, it's a spiritual link between two people. It's an intense connection that binds them together physically, mentally, spiritually, and those can just look like a host of different things. You might think of it like hmm, like a physical cord or a tie that connects two people. You can have more than one soul tie throughout your life. And soul ties can be one-sided. Yep. If a person you feel deeply connected to, they may not reciprocate your feelings. So that is just the long and the short of it. All right. So in my own life, I have dealt with soul ties from my earlier years of promiscuity and the breakdown of my first marriage. On on my journey of transformation, God, he asked me to clean these things up. And so I I learned it. You know, he's he's so good at leading us into all truth. Amen. So I have a word picture for you of how I was shown the soul ties. So when I met my current husband of 37 years, Don, ah, way back ago in San Diego, I was still carrying two suitcases of stuff. Yeah, I call myself a two bagger (laughs) back then. And that stuff was from life and my first marriage. So it's stuff, garbage, hurt, disappointed. You know, so many things were packed into those two suitcases. So I'm going to ask you a question. Let me ask you this. How do you suppose those suitcases affected my next relationship? 
<laughs> I know. I hear you say, run. <laughs> I was a broken individual, right? Run is right. So I had no idea that I was knit or tied in a host of different ways to other people. So my experience in inner healing and deliverance, you know, I have seen people have soul ties to their pets, to animals, to parents, objects, past partners, religion, leadership, even their expectations or the expectations of others. Yeah, it's it's just inexhaustible. Yeah, that was a big word, inexhaustible. So we knit our soul and give away a portion of ourself and our identity, right? So we need to reclaim everything the Lord's goodness, his grace and gifts bestowed on us to accomplish our destiny. That belongs to you and me. It does not belong to another. So in the covenant of marriage, you enter into an agreement of one flesh and you share, right? But in my experience, you do not lose your identity while sharing. And over the course of 37 odd years, <laughs> you learn about behaviors not always the best behaviors between you and your partner, right? <laughs> that is what repentance is for. <laughs> Do I have you laughing now? Okay, well, we need to lighten up this Friday afternoon, right? So your partner or even you yourself may have negative behaviors. Well, you don't really want to be knit to the behavior itself. You don't want to knit that to yourself. So in the course of learning along my journey, I have, we have learned to stand as a light of freedom, transformation, and change, right? And so I have, that's all I'm going to say about that one. You just learned that you don't want to pick up another person's negative behaviors and knit them to your soul because then okay i'm just being really careful here so this is how i pray practically all right so i repent i ask for forgiveness what does repentance mean is that i've changed my mind i've turned around and it's like i'm going in a different direction different path it gets me back to where the lord wants me to go where he's ordained my footsteps to step that's what asking for forgiveness and repenting is so i ask for forgiveness where my soul was tied with sin so I love the way the mere translation unwraps the word sin in Luke 3. That's Luke 3 in his translation. You can look it up. The word for sin, it's a distorted identity in its negative form. Thus, sin is that which separates one from one's true identity. Isn't that good? Yeah, so... When we step outside of who we really are, that's sin. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, yes, that is sin. We've literally stepped out of who we are and we're making choices or behaviors or actions that aren't our true self. So we change them, right? I also understood a soul is knit and it gives intimate property and permission to another. So you give your thoughts, your feelings, you make memories. Those memories are knit to you. And even physical attributes, you know, gifts and stuff, those things are knit to your heart. So in the area of relationships, when a relationship is dissolved for many a purpose, if the Lord has prompted me that I have a soul tie with that person, I have learned to ask for forgiveness and give back to them what belongs to them. It's it's theirs. It's not mine. And I also take back what is mine. And the blood of Jesus, it breaks the soul tie. 
Mm -hmm. So soul ties can be healthy as to God or to your spouse, yet they can be very healthy. It, it brings you close together. It brings me close together with God. He's knit me. I've knit him upon our heart. We are in oneness, right? So soul ties can also be unhealthy between a sexual partner, maybe a divorced spouse. And, you know, your question, how do I know if I have a soul tie? Mm, it's a great question. Ask the Lord. That's what I say all the time, right? Go ask Jesus. <laughs> so if anything is stealing your thoughts, your peace of mind, emotional health, just ask him. <laughs> I mean, keep it simple. Ask him, do you have a suitcase? <laughs> right? <laughs> he makes it so simple for me. <laughs> do you have a suitcase? And would you like to look inside with him? It, it, it's really that simple. It's that simple. So I'm going to share with you a couple of scriptures. Yes. Like who used to say, yeah, to make it legal if we're in church, right? Well, this is church, isn't it? Yeah, this is what it's about. <laughs> this is us in our oneness in the body of Christ. So in Genesis 34, in the story when Dinah was defiled, let me read. Now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, had bo been born to Jacob, went out to visit the daughters of the land. When Shechem, son of Hamor, the Hivite, the prince of the region saw her, he took her and he laid with her by force. And his soul was drawn to Dinah. His soul was knit to her, the daughter of Jacob. And he loved the young girl and spoke to her tenderly. That is one area. Okay, another one, Ezekiel 13, 18. This is what the sovereign Lord says. What sorrow awaits you women who are ensnaring the souls of my people, young and old alike. You tie magic charms on their wrists and furnish them with magic veils. You do, do you think you can trap others without bringing destruction on yourselves? Who that's Ezekiel 13, 18 is talking about false prophet prophetesses. So witchcraft also can be tied in your soul as well. And then we go in 1 Samuel 18, 1, David and Jonathan, as soon as he finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Okay, so in Deuteronomy 18, 11, 18, let me say that again, Deuteronomy eleven eighteen. it is a binding or a tying of God's word. So you shall therefore, it's a therefore, lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign in your hand, and they shall be as an affrontlets between your eyes. That is the backdrop for my sharing with you about soul ties. Okay, that's the backdrop. Now we can bring it forward here today. So I was praying for a hurting friend who just couldn't seem to break free and return to a sense of happiness and gigg giggleness and lightness and joy of life itself and being who they are in, in certain areas of their life. So I asked the Lord if I had permission to look inside their suitcase. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, yes, that the love that I carried in my heart for this person is what gives me spiritual permission to pray in this regard on their behalf. I hold them in my heart and I have their best interest concerned. Mm -hmm. So I followed the Lord's intercession for them asking for forgiveness in certain areas of their life. I returned soul possessions that were highlighted to me to all the parties concerned. You know, it's the same thing. You know, I give back to them what belongs to them and I return and I take back what belongs to my friend, right? 
And so that is what um, transpired in my prayer. And I prayed for all parties concerned. So this is the really cool part. I asked the Lord because I saw my dear friend struggling in the area of like thoughts, you know, thoughts and minds. And it was stealing peace and a peaceful night's sleep. Those are just patterns and, and electrical charges going in the brain. How do you change that, right? So I said, Lord, I understand what we have done spiritually with the prayer. Is there anything I can do practically regarding the thought patterns and the triggers? Hmm. He said, I can ask the angels. And I went, really? Cool. So angels can be sent to rewire their brain. Yeah, he said, absolutely. Ha ha. And I went, um, and how does that work? Well, I, I'm not really sure, but yippee, right? Yippee. Uh, some things just kind of like, um, too much information. I don't need to know. All I need to know is what he said and what his heart and his blood is doing. Amen. So this is the fun part. <laughs> Within 24 hours, I had a testimony from this person in my hand that the angels had delivered. My prayer had been answered. Yep. So what did God do? He sent another individual, which of course his divine messengers of light, they organized it and put it together. So you know who he sent? He sent that perfect person who they have divine measure of respect for. They can talk. That person could talk the talk and talk their language. And that person, I don't know this person. It was a divine person, could tell them how it is and give them a good, firm word that penetrates them to the core. Isn't that cool? A perfect person out of all of humanity that could speak to my friend. And the ears were just, and the heart, and the soul, everything was open. There you go. The prayer had done the work of turning over the land, but now we needed to rewire. I call that divine rewiring. Amen. Right? And I had this testimony. Yay, God. So they got their smile back, their get up and go, and that door of hope was once again opened. God is good. God is good. So I was thinking as I was kind of writing and framing up my script here, I went, ah, I am going to leave a link below if you are interested in inner healing, okay? I just want to make that available to you. I still do minister in those areas. We always minister in those areas, right? Okay, moving on. So let's hmm, let's get to our prayer point of coming up higher, right? So a dear friend and I were given a prayer assignment from the Lord in the area of the current political seats. Uh, yeah, oh, our, our assignment was to safely deliver God's spoken word, meaning God has assigned the names of individuals to particular seats. It's, it's written on the individual's destiny scroll. It's written in heaven. It's recorded. It's who they are. It is who God created these people to be, to be legislators for him. Well, that those words, those scrolls, they need to get where they need to go, right? I'll share a beloved scripture with you. In Isaiah 55, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Isn't this the point where he says, come on up here, let me show you. The rain and the snow, they come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. 
They cause grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with his word, that living word, what is spoken out of his mouth for you and me and for those political seats. Amen? Those names, right? He sent them out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all that he sent it, all that he wants it to, and it will prosper everywhere that it was sent. Mm -hmm. They. So this is the way, hmm, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking faster than my words. <laughs> so my head hears this, it like this. Rain is sent to water the earth. It produces a harvest which man enjoys. And that fruit brings praise to God. Proverbs 13, 12b, desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Amen? Back to our assignment. It was so easy to see, you know, praying for our government. You go, oh my goodness. It was so easy. If I opened our government suitcases, mm, yeah, it was so easy to see divisions at hand. Division between people, between neighbors, parties, and the huge gouge in our country's governmental affairs. Um, and where do you start? Where do you begin? Oh my goodness, so much work and so much clean up. So this is what it looked like. This is what our prayer assignment looked like. It looked like a road heading through the land with a big city on the other side. Well, each side of the road had put up barb, barb wire barriers to keep out what they considered as the enemy. Easy to imagine, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord, I ask for your forgiveness for considering my fellow man an enemy. Now, can I share with you? It's a little Google aha moment. So we get these pictures of our assignments and our encounters we can see in the spirit, but God puts it all together and he puts a little aha in it. He loves details. God is into details, right? <laughs> of course, you can share this with me, Kristen. So I Googled, huh, when was barbed wire used in war? Because I could see these barricades, right? Appropriately enough, probably the first patent for a form of barbed wire was issued to Leonce Grassin. Belden's in 1860 in France, where the wire became a metaphor for the stalemate between the Germans and the Allies in World War I. You get it? Yes, I highlighted it. It was a metaphor for stalemate. Uh huh. We're hearing you, God. So, it didn't take long for military men to realize that enemy soldiers probably had even thinner skin than most animals and that barbed wire should be just as effective against infantry and cavalry troops as on cattle. Yep, highlighted again, thin skin. Oh my goodness. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Nasty stuff. So you can see Here's this road leading to this city, and here both sides of the road have the barbed wire barricade there, and what are you going to do, God? This looks like, oh, how are we ever going to end this? So all my years of transformation, my journey, yes, you do learn how to pray. I mean, you continue to learn how to pray. I can only imagine how much spiritual stuff there is to clean up in this mess is like help lord <laughs> oh my goodness so but he's left this brilliant trail for us to follow at several times more it's just it has become part of our relation he says what 
did you come up here? <laughs> That's what he says. Why don't you come up here? Well, we heard it. When we came up here, we heard it. The traditions of men make God's word null and void. Ha ha, we got it. There it is. Mark 7, 6. And I'm going to read this little passage with you. Jesus answered them. Isaiah prophesied correctly about you hypocrites, as it is written. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain, and they teach as doctrine the precepts of man. You have disregarded the commandment of God to keep the tradition of men. He went on to say, you neatly set aside the command of God to maintain your own traditions. Bingo! Drum roll! Yes, God! Thank you! We could clean up the barbed wire mess by cleaning up the traditions of men. See, they, they, it's just like, come up higher. There's a spiritual place up higher that can take care of all that yuck, right? It takes care of hypocrites. It takes care of those individuals that honor him just with their lips, but their hearts are hard. It takes care of those doctrines and the precepts of man. What are those? God didn't author them. They have nothing to do with God. They are written by man. And, you know, people spend time maintaining those traditions. Traditions of men were neatly stuffed. So we, we ask for forgiveness of all those areas and what he highlighted on our hearts. And it's like all those traditions of men and everything that was knit into that. We, we like picked up the wall bar and we just, we just stuffed all that division in a bag. And after we ask for forgiveness for ourselves and then our countrymen, this is what we saw. So we saw a spiritual picture and we were picking up, my friend and I were picking up the white lines on the paved road. Yeah, it's like bar the, the barricade of barbed wire just turned into this electric, different frequency, just going away, right? And then we picked up the dividing lines, the white lines in the road. So the division, it's not there anymore. So it gives opportunity for mercy and forgiveness and change. And then we saw a battalion of the biggest dude military angels. I love them. <laughs> they came to take God's word about those men and women called by his name to the city ahead. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, my goodness. And that is what is so awesome. When you come up higher, you see a different perspective. And this, it works. He said, come up higher, you know, and in, in matters according to weather and difficulties. Oh, my. He is so brilliant. So that's just a little bit of, what did I say? A little bit of prayer points for each one of us to help us. I trust those, those little points and the things we talked about today have helped you go ask the Lord, go sit in his presence and allow him to minister to your heart. And that just you, you are an overcomer. We are overcomers and he always is leading us into all truth. And he's always asking us, why don't you just come up higher, right? Just come up a little higher so we can see the resolve of the result. I trust that this episode has blessed you. It's blessed me to live it, <laughs> to be immersed into it, to share it with you. Thank you so much. I have left some links to some goodies and resources below. And if you have a chance, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, and use hashtag intentional now and podcast, and I will know that you are a listener. That just blesses my socks. It has been my 
treat and treasure to spend this time with you today. I bless you and I bless you in your prayer closet. Amen. And I will talk to you again next week. Bye now.